Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. Just about a decade ago, gender dysphoria was a fairly short entry in abnormal psychology textbooks. It was a condition so obscure that most people had never heard of it. That's changed. If you've got children in school, you know how common that disorder has become. In some places, a third of girls in a given class identify as a gender other than the one in their birth certificates. Most of them probably don't mean it. Five years from now, they'll have moved on. They're going through what we used to call a phase. But for an increasingly large number of children, that phase will not end. Therapists will steer those children to doctors who will almost immediately give them powerful sex hormones, drugs whose long-term effects we cannot know. In some cases, those kids will then be referred to surgeons who will mutilate or remove their sex organs permanently. That is happening across the country tonight. We rarely talk about the details of any of it. It's all good, we're told. It's part of a vital, long overdue process of personal liberation, and if you stand in the way or ask too many questions, you are evil. Okay. But before we accept that version of the story, it is fair to ask, what are the details of the process exactly, and what are the consequences of it? This weekend, to its great credit, the news show 60 Minutes asked those questions in a surprisingly unflinching way. Anchor Leslie Stahl interviewed patients who had suffered from gender dysphoria and asked them a simple question, what happened next? Here's a woman called Grace Lindinsky Smith explaining what she went through after she went to her doctor to treat her disorder. Watch. She didn't go really go into what my gender dysphoria might have been stemming from. We only did a few sessions. They asked me, so why do you want to go on testosterone? And I said, well, being a woman just isn't working for me anymore. And they said, okay. So that was that. You got your prescription for testosterone. Mm-hmm. Yep. Being a woman just isn't working for me anymore. Okay. Here's some life-altering drugs. That's all it took. And then it kept going. Within just four months, Grace Lindinsky smith was in the operating room having a double mastectomy. Just four months after she started testosterone, she says she was approved for a mastectomy, what's called top surgery, that she told us was traumatic. I started to have a really disturbing sense that like a part of my body was missing, almost a ghost limb feeling about being like, there's something that should be there. And the feeling really surprised me, but it was really hard to deny. And so she detransitioned by going off testosterone and then went back to the clinic, and she says complained to the doctor that the process didn't follow the WPATH guidelines. I can't believe that I transitioned and detransitioned, including hormones and surgery, in the course of, like, less than one year. It's completely crazy. It's completely crazy. Yes, it is. It is completely crazy. It's also reckless and cruel and totally unethical. And yet in the newly politicized atmosphere of American medicine, it is routine. Another person who spoke to 60 Minutes, a man identified as Garrett, told Leslie Stahl that doctors rushed him into a sex change operation. After just three months of taking female hormones, they castrated him. Garrett from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, went from taking hormones to getting his testicles removed, he says, in just three months, whereas the current guidelines call for continuous use for a year. I had never really been suicidal before um, until I had my breast augmentation, and about a week afterwards, I wanted to, like, actually kill myself. Like, I had a plan and I was gonna do it, but I just kept thinking about like my family to stop myself. It kind of felt like, how am I ever gonna feel normal again like other guys now? Three months to castration, and then a week after the surgery, he wanted to kill himself. Now that makes sense, and yet it is the precise opposite of what activists claim, the opposite of the justification for these procedures in the first place. If you ask questions about the wisdom of gender reassignment surgery, you will be accused immediately of pushing the vulnerable towards self-harm. But in fact, there's quite a bit of evidence of the opposite. Gender reassignment surgery and chemical castration cause depression and exacerbate mental illness. This is known. Just five years ago, a study by the Obama administration found no positive health benefits from this so-called treatment. In a 2016 document called the Proposed Decision Memo for Gender Dysphoria and Gender Reassignment Surgery, Obama officials concluded that, quote, 
Based on a thorough review of the clinical evidence available at this time, there is not enough evidence to determine whether gender reassignment surgeries improve health outcomes for Medicare beneficiaries with gender dysphoria, end quote. So why wasn't there enough evidence? Well, the Obama administration found that many sex change patients were, quote, lost to follow up. Why is that? Many of those patients apparently had killed themselves. Researchers in Sweden found the same thing. After 10 years of study, the Swedes concluded that people who underwent sex reassignment surgery were 19% more likely to commit suicide. The risk of psychiatric hospitalization was nearly three times greater. In other words, it was an utter disaster. Yet strikingly, most Americans are not aware of these numbers. They've never seen this research. They're not allowed to see it. Instead, they see a daily barrage of propaganda, most of it online, made possible by Google and Facebook. That propaganda has a very specific effect, as intended. Watch. How many of you feel that you were blindly affirmed? I didn't get enough pushback on transitioning. I went for two appointments, and after the second one, I had, like, my letter to go get on cross-sex hormones. Two visits? That's it? All four tell us they learned about transitioning on the Internet, where there are transformation videos on YouTube, trans influencers, and forums. We haven't said an awful lot of complimentary things about Leslie Stahl on this show, but Sunday night's piece was a remarkably brave piece of journalism. Leslie Stahl certainly didn't need to do that piece. She did it anyway. Good for her. And she's being punished for it now. Within minutes of that broadcast, the usual liars were accusing Leslie Stahl and the people she interviewed of committing an act of violence, their crime telling the truth. Now, those kinds of, effect, of attacks have a chilling effect on the rest of the population, and that's, of course, the point of making them. Watch this psychologist describe how many in medicine are simply too afraid to care for their patients. Do you have conversations with your colleagues about this whole area of accepting what young people are saying too readily? Yes, everyone is very scared to speak up because we're afraid of not being seen as being affirming or being supportive of these young people or doing something to hurt the trans community. But even some of the providers are trans themselves and share these concerns. We're afraid to speak up because we don't want to be seen as not affirming young people in their decision to have these surgeries and to take these life-altering drugs. These young people, how young are we talking about? At what age do we have to respect their personal decision to, say, undergo chemical castration? Well, last year, Joe Biden answered that question. He suggested that children as young as eight can change their sex. The idea that an eight-year-old child or a 10-year-old child decides, you know, I decided I want to be transgender. That's what I think I'd like to be. It may make my life a lot easier. There should be zero discrimination. So as we said at the outset, things are moving awfully fast, and most people have no idea what the details are. So it seems worth spending some time, as 60 Minutes did over the weekend, talking to people who've actually been through this process. 